Buying a home has many aspects to it, one of them being the deposit. In today's video, I'm here to clear up any confusion about the home deposit requirements here in New Zealand. If you're planning to buy your first home and have questions about the deposit requirements, you've come to the right place. Whether you're dreaming of a cozy apartment or a spacious house, understanding the deposit requirements is a crucial part in making that dream a reality. So let's get into it. Before we delve into the specifics, let's understand first why having a home deposit is so important. The deposit is a significant upfront sum that you pay towards the total purchase price of the home. It not only reduces the overall loan amount that you'll need, but also serves as a show of financial strength to the lenders. The ideal deposit for buying your own home is 20%. However, in most cases, the minimum deposit requirement is 10%, and in some cases, only 5% may be required. If you have less than 20%, the banks refer to you as what is called a low equity borrower. This means that you'll be required to meet different criteria as opposed to someone who may have 20% for their deposit. If you fall into this category of being a low equity borrower, usually a low equity premium or low equity margin is charged. What this means is that usually you have to pay a one-off low equity premium to the lender or a low equity margin is added onto your interest rate, which can later be removed when you've reached the 20% equity requirement. For example, let's say the standard interest rate is 6%. For you, you may only have a 17% deposit. This means the low equity margin is added to the interest rate. So for you, the interest rate may be 6.3%, for example. The exact margin that is added varies a little bit between the lenders. So it's best to check with your mortgage advisor as to which lender may be the best fit for you if you are a low equity borrower. Previously, banks were very hesitant to lend to borrowers with less than 20% deposit. The LVR rules changed recently. As of June, 2023, the lenders can now allocate 15% of their funds towards low deposit borrowers. Having a higher income if you are a low equity borrower does increase your chances of getting your loan approved. If you are a high income earner, you'll have to explain why you haven't been able to save more towards your deposit. And one of the reasons for this could be that you've been focusing on paying down debt. Responsible financial habits go a long way in gaining the bank's trust. For most banks, they require genuine savings. What this means is that you'll need to have saved 5% towards your deposit yourself. So what counts as genuine savings? Cash in the bank, money in your KiwiSaver account, including any employer and government contributions, and also any bonuses that you may receive from your employer. What doesn't count as genuine savings? Money that is available to you on your credit card. Some people try to withdraw this and use this towards their deposit. Also any debts that you're repaying, and the first home grant. A quick side note on this, if you are eligible, you can use the first home grant towards your deposit. However, it's just not counted as genuine savings. The rest of your deposit can be gifted by a parent as well. Money from parents could also be a loan rather than a gift. If it is a loan, you'll need to ensure there is a clear agreement in place with terms set out as this is something that would need to provide to the lender as part of your mortgage application. Kāinga Ora administers the first home loan scheme here in New Zealand. If you meet the income criteria for this, you can qualify with just a 5% deposit. It's an excellent option for eligible buyers and a great way to get more Kiwis into their first homes. If you find it challenging to save a substantial deposit, something that you could utilize is the Kiwi Saver Scheme. This can help with creating an automated savings program that you can then utilize for your first home. I have another video all about Kiwi Saver and how it can help you buy your first home, which I'll link down in the description box. Saving for a home deposit requires careful budgeting and good financial discipline. Consider creating a dedicated savings account and setting up automatic transfers. Cut back on unnecessary expenses and explore different ways to boost your income to reach your savings goal faster. I have a great video with my four simple steps to create a budget that can help you get on top of your finances and I'll link it down below for you. Getting a mortgage with a small deposit requires some strategic steps. A few quick tips are to keep your spending in check, minimize any debt and any risks, and consider banking at a separate bank to your partner to give you more options when it comes time to getting approved. As you navigate the home buying process, it's essential that you seek support and guidance from a mortgage advisor such as myself. Advisors can guide you through available options, help you understand your borrowing capacity, 
and also provide support along your journey. It's never too early to get this process started. So if you'd like a free assessment of your current financial position, feel free to get in touch and I can provide some advice and guidance on what you can do to reach your goal of home ownership. So to summarize, the minimum deposit requirement is 5% for rare cases and also for the first home loan scheme. The typical minimum deposit requirement is 10%, but if you can reach 20%, that puts you in a better position for the lenders. Well, that wraps up today's video on how much deposit do you need to buy your first home here in New Zealand. Remember, home ownership is an exciting journey, and while it can be challenging saving your deposit, it's a significant step towards achieving your goals. If you found this video helpful today, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.